Oh, shoot. Are we driving? Uh. Little by little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the Dark Presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. It's, uh... Alan's mind is the Dark Presence. <laughs> going on here are these like oh, i can change cars huh i feel like this is this is what kind of car is this okay this is more inconspicuous Who's just leaving their fucking cars around with their keys in there? What is happening? Okay, I guess we're not going that way. It's just like an all driving section. That'd be kind of cool. I had no idea there was driving in this. Like, I just thought we were going to run through a series of levels. <laughs> and it was just all going to be the same. But this is neat that they, that they change it up. Oh, another car? I mean, if you're running from the FBI, it's a good idea to change cars a bunch of times. Because they could be following me with a chopper. This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big shot G Man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a. Well, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> so, folks. I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now, because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. All right, let's try out this car. Oh, this bridge is out. Oh, I think I'm supposed to go back. Did I go? Did I miss it? Or... Where the hell is this place? What the hell? What is happening? Maybe I got turned around or something? Oh, I think I just kind of got turned around there. Another car. The, hold on, is this the fire tower that we saw before? Or is it a different one?
Heather Radio. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, to me, that's strange because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> Alan's got some nice shoes. Not very good for running. Wait, are they boots? Love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever, and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Or heck, childish, even? There's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything, but what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she, I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work, I don't know, but, well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone, not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I'm Jesus. I'm living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things. Almost got shot. And the, and the show's done. <laughs> yeah. These uh, these radio segments are pretty long. Oh, <laughs> wrong way. Wait, 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 wait. Is there like a page? There's no, there's no page here or something? <laughs> no. Okay. I'll never be able to follow my trail. Alan didn't play a lot of GTA. Or maybe he played too much GTA. So, it looks like we're almost at the mine. Pretty wild how much time the game takes to ramp up. I was early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. Oh, I can go up. And get a sniper rifle. Ah, ha ha! Wake attacked by a bulldozer is the last one that we got. Vermont. Spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake out to be something special, but Mott hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look at the wife, though, and he liked what he saw. Mott had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. The fuck? Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. Mott? Is that the kidnapper? Was there... I remember there being someone else on the boat, but I don't remember who it was. Was that the kidnapper? <laughs> okay, I tried. This, if this is control, you, you could do that. I'll say it again. This is a bizarre game. <laughs> In all the right ways. I think if I think that if this game was made today, and I realize I'm playing a remaster, I think people would find would say like it's too slow. Uh, but I I actually like this the slower pace. Just 
It makes the it makes like the tense parts that much more intense, you know? When you've got these sections where you're just kind of exploring and looking around. Bright coal Bright Falls coal mine. Washington Mining Corp. I know we're driving from here. Oh, finally. First coffee of the day. It's the best one. Wait, what does it say? Oh, I can read it. Uh, well, there were some earlier residents in the area. The true Genesis. I don't know if I'd use the term Genesis <laughs> with Bright Falls. True Genesis of the town. Of Bright Falls came with the founding of the Bright Falls Mining Company and the opening of the Bright Falls Coal Mine in 19, or sorry, 1878. Although the work was hard and dangerous, many immigrants, Germans, Poles, Italians, Finns, and Swedes, among others, worked the mines. Well, lucrative at first, the mining steadily declined in the 20th century. The seams were rich, but hard to get at, and the volcanic activity in the area made the mine shafts particularly dangerous. Volcanic activity in the area. Oh, it is literally a museum. I thought he was just saying that in the sense that it was like quiet and empty because no one goes to museums anymore, right? He's <laughs> getting right up close to that one. In 1970, a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake, a relatively minor, caused most of the deep mining tunnels to collapse or flood. 32 miners lost their lives in the calamity. And all mining around Bright Falls came to a final stop. Now many of the remaining buildings are protected as historical landmarks. With Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken studio window, Maine stared at Sarah. The sheriff looked away. Maine's voice shook with barely controlled anger. That boy's doing more drinking than thinking. I hope you know what you're doing, Sarah. He's got a sickness in his eyes. You take my word for it. He wants Wake for a reason, and it's not for anything good. That's the uh, radio host, right? Saying that. Gotta try. Speaking of Halo. What the fuck? You just die? <laughs> you just die? That's not wide enough. I was gonna try to drive the car up here. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to do that. I didn't want to go outside. Cops had to be looking for me. The noon sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back. Or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. Killing the chair more like I it. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. Wait, now I have my guns? Wake! Where the hell are you? Change of plans. You know where Mirror Peak is? It's a big mountain north of where you are. You follow the path from the mine, you can't miss it. There's a lookout point there. I'll be waiting. I'm through being jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello? Ah! I'm going to kill him. I had to get to Mirror Peak. Okay. What the f fuck? It was close. 
may be closer than ever before. Holy shit cans. Leave the building. Oh, to tell me toys. Okay. Evening coffee. Yeah, I have like so much stuff. I think I'm just going to use the shotgun initially and then we can use the pistol for backup. I didn't even bother trying the door because I knew it wasn't going to open. Oh, this seems smart. Ow! Oh, God. Oops, I hit the wrong button. There's a manuscript page here, right? Oh, man. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow, strong and sharp. She was his muse. So, Barbara Jagger is the old woman, if I'm remembering correctly, right? Or am I getting confused? You guys, you guys can correct me there in the comment section. If I've got this wrong. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> what a great way to start the combat out. Oh, shit. What in the hell? Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm panicking. Just one of the wheels got possessed. Let's get the fuck out of here. Flashbangs, flashbangs. Okay. Oh, there's more. Cool, cool, cool. I hit and I hit down to change. Wonder if I could shoot those gas canisters and stuff to get explosions going. Oh, this is neat. Shit, I dropped it. Right in the ball! Boom! I meant to change to the flashbangs. What? What? Oh, I have to go down that way.
Maybe I just should have dropped that down inside instead of dropping down with it, but we're good. Take a look for supplies, but I think it's empty here. Probably want to stay away from that. Don't you think, Alan? Oh no. The only way to reach the hillside ahead was to go through the building. I had to find a way to avoid electrocution. Okay, so maybe I have to drive over to there. Turn that off. Oh, cool. Wait, they're destroying axes at me? Who throws axes at a fucking military vehicle? Or whatever this is. I don't think I need to do that. Oh god! Oh shit! Oh god! Dodge that shit! Woo! Oh. Oh my god. That could have been handled better. Okay, there's a big light here. Maybe I could have just run them over? I probably should have just run them over. But that's fine. That was exciting. Yeah, let's use the flare gun. Shotgun. Am I going to get more of them? What the fuck? Go! Oh god! Oh! Holy shit, holy shit. It's got a fucking sickle! Nice, 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 nice. Oh god. Just go! Just go! Get the fuck out of here! Oh, God. Okay. Okay, we're good. I came pretty freaking close there, though. What else is walking around in here?
nice. Oh, shit. Wait, is he being protected still? Oh, he is. No, he isn't. I thought I, I hit the button to dodge, but I guess you have to dodge in the right direction. Oh, they're giving me lots of revolver ammo, so let's just use it. If they're giving me shotgun ammo, I'd be using that. Okay. So fucking more people walking around. Wait, are we just back to where we started? Trust no one in the dark. Thanks, Captain S Spray Paint Obvious. Okay. Just gonna shoot this. Just wanted to see if that opens something up, but it doesn't look like it. Oh, there's something over there. Oh, I think I fell down the other side, maybe. Fuck, how do I get... Oh, there's a ladder there. <laughs> I don't know what it is about me, but I'm really good at missing ladders. Unless they're actually, even if they're painted, like, yellow. Pretty yellow, I still remember. Half-Life, um... Was it Half-Life 2 or Black Mesa? I just... I, it was Half-Life 2. I just... Follow. I just kept missing ladders, even though they were, like, spray-painted yellow. Some of the Taken retained echoes of their former selves, but these were just the nerve twitches of a dead thing. Nothing remained but a shell covered and filled with darkness. In most cases, these puppets were enough for the purposes of the Dark Presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. It needed his mind. Mm -hmm. And so rather than taking him over completely, it merely touched him. In most cases, these puppets are enough for the purpose of the Dark Presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. As with the writer. Okay. He needed his mind. Yeah, so it just touched us. So it's like digging into our mind. And kind of controlling us, I think, to a certain degree, but also just knows what we like, and it's using that in order to craft the uh, the nightmare that we're writing. Whoa. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Okay, can I jump through there? <laughs> I shot him because I was like, oh, maybe if I shoot that, I could just jump through, but I can't. There's no window there, and I can't jump through it. So forget about that plan. <laughs> 